What's going on today, everybody? I hope that you're having a fantastic day. I know I am because we're working on that thing. I know it's a little bit dark right now. I started working on this video and then I thought it's probably gonna be a lot easier to do the lights at night. So here we are, we're doing the lights at night. So I wanna get this done. I'm tired of looking at these sitting on my bench. So let's get these lights installed on the Subaru. So the SDI doing the jewel eye retrofit. I burnt out one of the headlights. I've been riding around with one of the headlights out. So it's time to fix this. I went and bought a bulb and just so I can get these aligned right and looking the right way. So one of the biggest things that we deal with with the retrofit system is aiming the system or getting it to act like the OEM system. How is it going to look looking down the road? And are we going to be destroying other people's eyes by shooting these beams right in their eyes? So let's go ahead, try to set these up to factory settings, see if we can get it close enough or pretty dang close to what we need for OEM and uh, go from there. So got the car sitting in the driveway and the garage. So it's pointing at the garage. And I've gone ahead and started to mark up where things need to be and how they should be looking so i've currently got a couple of them sitting um over here so i've got one of them sitting torn apart the other one i kind of put together but i'm finding out that i'm having some issue with a wire not allowing it to aim right either way right now let's get a alignment going on where we need to be on the stock so we can take the new ones and adjust them to that because I'm not going to be able to adjust these really in the car without taking the battery out or the or the um, air box out. I'm tired of running around without a headlight in that one side. So I think today's the day we actually get these jewel eyes sorted out and hopefully finally put them on the car. So really quickly, just a reminder, here's what we got going on. We've got our low beams, which are these guys, and some really dirty, scratched up, cracked lenses, our turn signals, and our high beams. High beams are off right now, just the lights are on. And then here's the other side, same thing. I don't know what's going on with these lenses, but the lenses are just cracking out really, really bad. And then high beams, low beams, turn signals, or daytime running lights. So this is the current setup. This is what we're currently looking at. The bumper's off because I had to take everything off. And then let's go ahead and we'll lower this door and we'll get our lights shining on something stationary. So now we can see kind of where the lights are hitting and we can block one light and show one and show both of them. So I think this is why I'm having trouble seeing at night is because that right or passenger side isn't really doing anything. I don't know what's up with the beam pattern, but it's not doing anything. If I take the driver's side, put the driver's side back, you can kind of see. Now it's got a definite line that goes across the garage and I've kind of marked it out with the blue tape. And then these are my focal points of both my lenses. So that's where both lens is looking down and seeing. And then that's the cutoff so we don't destroy people's eyes. So that's a good baseline on what we need to do and how we need to aim these new ones. There's just the driver's side and there's the passenger side too. So let's go ahead. Now we've got a baseline. We'll get the new ones hooked up and see where they're lining up to those ones. Now this is gonna be arguably the hardest part of the whole system. It's kind of easy to put the two together and make it work, but now we got to see if our calculations were correct from the very, very beginning. So it's a lot of work to get it to where we are now. And now it has to be perfect so that we're legal and we don't make things worse for other people because road safety is a whole main key to this is you can't be going around blinding everybody everywhere you go. That's why they have high beams and low beams. So 
we got to be courteous on the road and adjusting these to the right settings is going to be the ben most beneficial. So hopefully all the hard work's paid off and we're actually uh, hopefully lining up to pretty close to where we need to be. Be courteous. This, this is the hardest part. It's got to be perfect or else, I mean, anybody can put the two pieces together, but it needs to be right now. And this is, I'm going to say it again, the hardest part. So let's get to it. It's going to take time. So this video might kind of jump around a little bit, <laughs> but for right now, we're going to put these in and see where we're at and go from there. Wish me luck. There we go. So we've got the passenger side installed and before we even do any making of the adjustments we're pretty close it definitely is slanted a little bit which i kind of kind of expected with how the light sat in the uh in the actual lens or in the housing but it's a lot closer than i thought it was going to be so that's cool now we can see that our focal point is a little bit too high so it's looking like our focal point is right here and it needs to be about here and our line needs to come down a little bit. If we can, it needs to rotate, but I'm okay if it's angled a little bit as long as we get this down and the old lights needed to come up anyways. So maybe, maybe we're really close to where we need to be. Let's get the other light installed and see how that one looks. I gotta say this old system is so outdated compared to the new one it looks so much better and that's even without the dlrs or high beams or anything going so i cannot wait to see what this looks like when it's done of course it doesn't want to focus properly to show everything but it looks so much better there we go now we got the new lights in and as close as i can get them right now so it's actually going pretty pretty decent. My focal point is right here, which it should be down a little bit, but I needed to bring the lights up. I need this one to go down some more, but I stripped out the the uh, plastic piece trying to get enough adjustment. I wasn't paying attention, ran the electric drill in too much, but this one needs to come down. That side's looking really, really good. If anything, the focal point's right here. It needs to come in, but they're both out just a little bit which shouldn't be the end of the world it'll look good still going down the road so i'm gonna work on getting this one going but for right now that's not it's not a bad beam pattern here's just the drivers and then here's just the passengers That's honestly not that bad for my first set of headlights ever. I mean, they're really, really close to where they need to be. One thing that I have a problem with is the bottom adjustment screw. I seem to ran out of down. So if anything, I needed to have more space in the bottom to kind of angle those down more and have more adjustment have more adjustment i'd have more room so i think i made them just a little bit too tight on the bottom the top's been fine but i just don't have quite enough adjustment to suck the bottom in more to bring those beams down now i can push the top out but the top's now hitting the lens so if i push the top out that will also point it down but that one will point it down and in so it'll actually rotate, so they're kind of angled like this. It'll actually rotate it more down and in. So it is what it is. I wish it was a little bit more better, but for right, I mean, for my first try, it ain't that bad. Actually, I'm actually pretty proud of it. That right, the passenger side one turned out really, really well. The, the driver side one, I'll give it to you. It, it's not quite perfect, but I think with a little bit of adjustment, and a little bit of playing with my my mold, my backing, how things are going, and fixing that stripped out screw or that stripped out bolt, I think I'll be sitting pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go try to put a metal nut on the backside of that plastic to see if I can just pull it a little bit more and maybe shave some of the plastic down. I think that housing has the room if a cable Maybe a cable swung out and is pinched back there. That might be some of my problem. Because this 
it, I had it set up perfect when I first did this without the lenses. I had it set perfect to what the OEM ones, OEM ones were in the garage and I kind of had everything stable and the car sat for a long time. Well, I had to take the car out and now I don't have those where it was supposed to be. But I'm pretty happy with it. Now let's go ahead, let's get the rest of this. Actually, I wanna to try to fix the beam real quick and then we'll go ahead, finish up the wiring, tuck the wiring and get the front fascia back all together, get that bumper back on. They're looking good so far, looking really good. I like it. One last thing I wanna check real quick is if the high beams work and if they work, how much more better, more better are they? So let's see how much more better they are. Well, that's not bad. It definitely throws light a lot further and it's a lot more focal, so hopefully that will help me out driving. Now let's go ahead, let's fix these things. Okay, so here's the problem I'm having, is this bottom one right here, this guy is not allowing it to go to have the bottom of this suck down to get that beam to come down. And the reason is, is because it's stripped because it's just a little plastic piece. So if we go ahead and we take our, our um, adjuster, our eight millimeter, and we put it on it, if we go try to bring it in, it doesn't move. If we try to move it out, it doesn't move. Whereas if we watch this one, if we try to bring this one, where are you at? This one out, you can watch, and it will actually move well, that's moving in. If we move it out, it'll actually start coming out. Of the housing right there. Now, it's all minimal, so you can get that fine adjustment, but it's definitely, I don't have any more adjustment in here to make it do anything, so I can't get it down further than it needs to be. And all I have to do is pull on this I'm starting to break the bottom clips from trying to pull this apart so many times. But if I gently pull on it, it'll start to come out. But that's not how I want to adjust it. I want to be able to actually adjust it in the car. So here's a better version of what's going on back there. So that's, you can kind of hear the gears. Not the gears, but the... I guess the splines of a bolt, but it's a plastic piece and it's just sliding in and out. So that's not allowing it to adjust to where it needs to be. Flipped over, this is the bottom one. The bottom one has this little white tab. I've modified it a little bit so it's a little shorter, but it's got this white plastic piece right here and that's supposed to act as the nut. Well, the bolt's just going in and out and it can't adjust it. So when I'm spinning it to suck it in, it's just spinning inside there, not doing anything. So we're gonna go ahead, take this off. There's two push clips on the other side, which can be very hard to push, but that'll allow us to get it out now. There we go. Got that piece out, there's a push clip right here, push clip right here. This one's been broken from the wreck that it was in. Now we can go ahead and split these halves. So these halves need to come apart, there's a little clip right here, you kind of see. But that needs to come out, so we pull out and down. Now I've got the two pieces separated. So now this piece is acting as the nut, and you can kind of see, hopefully, hopefully you can see that there's no teeth really left on that. I don't know if I have. There you go. That's the same bolt that I have that's on the bottom of the housing and it's just sliding in and out. You can hear the gears are trying to catch, but it's just spinning in there, not allowing it to go. So what I'm doing is I've got a nut here and this nut has a collar. The collar is just gonna help me locate it better 
but I'm gonna drill this side out and heat this nut up and press it in there to make sure that I have a metal stud now instead of plastic. So the metal hopefully won't ever fail. And I should have enough holding it together to uh, make things work. So let's go ahead, let's get this drilled out and I'm drilling it out just a little bit smaller than what this bolt head is. So there's gonna be lots of meat holding together what we've actually need in this plastic piece. So let's go ahead, put this drill bit in. It's a 17, 30 seconds. It's, it'll be different for you if you find a different bolt, but I think the collar is gonna help me out in the long run by keeping more of the metal. So it will suck through like this and that metal piece will suck into the plastic. So put it in basically like that. Got it drilled. Make sure that the nut definitely doesn't fit in there. Perfect. So now I'll, I'll go ahead and I found a bolt. Same exact dimensions and everything as the one in the housing. So now the bolt's on there. Take this and press it in after I heat it up. So let's get it warm. Now we'll take this and press it into it the best we can, centering it. Now you can see it has kind of where it needs to be. Need it a little bit further in, so I'm gonna heat it up again. There we go, now we've got the metal piece inserted in there. I'm happy with how it looks. I have a little bit of cleanup on this side where the plastic kind of pushed through, but that's that's easy enough to fix. Now, I'm gonna let it cool, let that plastic get nice and hard so it holds that piece in there, and I won't burn myself. So there it is, it's upside down, but everything fits in there. We've got threads sticking out so we know that it's good. I can go ahead and take this off now. I'll have to run it out from the back, the back side, but we can take that off, put it all together, and now we have metal threads holding it on and not plastic. Good and bad, that could really get me in trouble, but it's gonna save me right now, and I'm definitely not doing it with the drill anymore. I'm gonna do it all by hand, unfortunately. It would be easy just kind of switch these two and just or just use the red one instead of the, the white one, but they're different sizes. That one's a little bit bigger than this one is. So I don't know I don't know what's going on with why they're different, but apparently they needed to be different. Either way, this one's fixed now, and I might have to do it to these ones eventually, but these ones are easier to get to. This one's tucked way underneath everything, so I, this one I can just kind of push in if I need to. Cool, let's put it all back together now and readjust everything. I'm gonna go with that's not that bad. I got it pretty close to where it needs to be on both of them. The passenger side is a little bit higher. The driver side, I got it down enough and it's flatter now, so it shouldn't be blinding anybody. They're already low, I needed them to come up, so right there's where I wanna keep them. I think that's probably gonna be the perfect spot I got everything I think dialed in and working. So let's run through and check things out. We got the DLRs running, the three uh, low beams, the high beams will come on with the high beams, but those are looking really, really cool. The other side's the same way. We've got our three low beams and our DLRs. So let's run through and hopefully we can get everything to look right on here i was going to use one of these little tap in adapter things where you find one of the fuses this one happens to be the micro fuse and it adds it's an add a fuse so i got a pack of these a whole bunch of them but it turns out on the subaru i don't need it there is a relay which 
this one's a big one, but there's a relay that has a switched, um, a, a accessory switched leg of it. So I can go ahead and take the power from that and use that to power my demon eyes. So right now they'll be off whenever I have the key off, but then whenever I turn the key on, they'll turn on. So if I don't want to have any lights on, it'll just roll around with the demon eyes on. That's what I want. Then when I want to, I can turn the first click of my lights. That'll turn all my daytime running lights on. The five daytime running lights and then the ribbon underneath. That will have my daytime running lights. Then the next click up will be my low beams. That'll be my three low beams, which will be even brighter. And then the daytime running light bar, I believe. And then that should be all the way on. You click it and then that's your high beams. So your high beams will turn all of them on. So... I've got all my functions that I want and how I want them to do it. And I can't believe that this is, it's coming together so nicely now. There's been a lot of work and pre preparation into it, but we're getting it. So I'm going to go ahead we'll show you that relay real quick. It's a little bit jerry rigged, but right here I've got a tap in. It would have looked cleaner with the inserted fuse, don't tap fuse thing, but this is what I got. It'll work for now until I find a better solution. This leg, this outer leg of this relay, which actually is not being used. So if we put this right here, you can see that this block out is where that relay is supposed to be. So there's no relay there. I don't need anything. But this leg, the far one, is actually um, accessory switched. So as soon as I turn the car on, it sends power, which will send power to my demon eyes, which the controllers and the driver one send it over to that one. Keys off right now. Nothing's on. As soon as I turn the key to on, the demon eyes turn on exactly how I want it. Then for some reason, if I ever need to turn it off, I just turn the phone on and I can turn them off right there and it won't send power to anything. So I can use my phone to change the color and turn them off pretty slick the best part is is it, it has a memory so whatever last one you used it redoes that one so it doesn't just automatically start on white or off or whatever it starts on what you left off on so that is the coolest thing so far about the demon eyes is because it was going to be annoying to have to go in and change it every time but it remembers every time i turn on it does the same thing super sweet there wasn't really much in the way of figuring out in this video which has kudos because that was a whole bunch of preparation and planning that we did beforehand and got done out of the car that we didn't need to do inside the car so everything was plug and play minus one wire i had to figure out where one wire went now i've got the bolts to put on and the rubber uh the butyl to put headlight butyl stuff the rubber the the annoying gasket stuff to put in there i still have that to put in but we're pretty much done with this i gotta clean them gotta take them apart and make sure everything's pristine and nice, but for the project, it's pretty well done. So the next time you see it, it's gonna be done. I can't wait. So there we go. We've got our demon eyes that turn on with the car, the key. And then if we go and turn the first click, that's our low beams, our DLRs only. Our second is low beams and DLRs and then high beams. Well, I think I finally got these things sorted out to where I need them to be and I can't be happier with what I have. It's so cool to have all these functions and um, I still have a couple more things to do. I actually broke one of the clips while putting these together so I haven't finished putting in the butyl on but I have a little bit of fixing to do. Lots of cleaning because now I got to get all the shavings and everything out of the inside of it but the next video you guys are going to see these things are going to be done installed and on here. Hopefully permanently. I can't wait. It's been a long time coming. Thank you guys all for staying with me this long through the journey. And hopefully you've learned something along with me. Hopefully I've saved you guys some of the heartache that I've had. Because there's been a lot of learning curves on this one. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. If you, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment if you're doing it. I want to know what vehicle you're doing it on. And um, 
Enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace. Check out those colors. It's just whatever you want. Take the phone. We can change whatever you want. What color? What color we got? We can do anything you want. So cool. Just a click of the button. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. I think purple's my favorite on here though. Peace. And if they work, how much more better, more better are they?